Yeah, I'll press record, man. Uh, Nino's going to edit it, so Whew, we can start right now. I'll have a menu mask. <laughs> I have a menu mask. Well, put it on. Guys, so. Don't worry. Okay. okay <laughs> no, okay. I lost it. I lost it. I lost oh, it. I took care of it. Don't worry. Damn it, man. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone got their screens ready? Guys. ready? Everything ready? I wait. I wait. Yep. I wait. Okay, I wait. short, man. Welcome, everyone, to uh, uh, the Dusty Den podcast. Uh, we've got a bunch of fans from the local boys here to talk about football, here to talk about uh, news regarding sports, M- mostly football, but we'll, we'll talk about other stuff too, kind of external things. Um, we're going to start talking, we're going to, first thing we're going to talk about is are the fixtures that just happened. Uh, there was a lot of uh, big results this weekend. Uh, we're going to talk about the Premier League. I don't think we're going to talk about other leagues per se because I think a lot of the big news was at the Premier League and after that we're going to talk about the transfer window uh, you know what has happened today so far uh, it's still open but in a few hours it's going to close it's right in front of me I'm seeing everything happen but really not not that much happening there's not that much happening and then after that we're going to talk about our boy Pizzo, uh who is now uh, the manager of Al Ali. Uh, they had a victory this weekend, and uh, yeah, man, we'll just discuss what this means for South African football, what this means for our guy, and if he's going to succeed or not, you know, in a, a more international state. I, I wouldn't say it's international, but it's a, it's a little more, inter- it's, it's more international for South Africans, but it's still a, a country within the continent. So, uh, just let me introduce everyone, man, or I think I should allow you guys to introduce yourselves. First of all, I'm Abo. Today I'll be hosting, and um, I don't have no Twitter handles right now, but I will uh, post them uh, when the video is done and it's edited. Uh, Debo, you want to introduce yourself? Except Debo over here, uh, Red Devil through and through, GGMU. <laughs> okay, Red Devil, and from what you guys can see behind me here, you know, yeah, I support these guys. Uh, the other chap, Domi, Dominic. Yeah, boy, that's me. Uh, I'm like this guy, unfortunately. Menu <laughs> supporter. Batman. Quite sad. <laughs> yeah. Hiding, sad. bro. Hiding. We all have to hide, bro. This is a sad. This yeah. is a sad podcast, bro. I, I, to see you. I can't. I can't even. I can't even say anything. This is painful. I, I, I had I had so much to I'm say. I'm speechless. Yeah, I was man. gonna say a lot, but now <laughs> it's like wasted words almost because Oli is staying. <laughs> yeah, it's man. It's not a well, bad thing. It's not a bad thing. Well, let's start with uh, Oli. Then let's start with Man United. That was the first of the big results uh, this weekend. Uh, Chelsea won four 0 Anything, guys? You guys want to add about that? Chelsea won. It's not okay. Let's go to Man United. Yeah, well, just looking, just looking at all the fixtures. Chelsea, you just Chelsea gotta say won for now. Yeah, Chelsea won. You just Chelsea. gotta say that the Premier League is like so unpredictable. I mean, from the first game of the weekend, who would have thought West Ham's gonna cut Leicester so badly? You know, it was super unpredictable. A lot of my bed slips got destroyed. You know, oh, I bro. really didn't pick any of these games. <sighs> But getting into the Man U game, man, it was a bit of a rough one. Um, we got half a dozen, and you can't say they didn't deserve. You can't say they deserved any better. It was a bad performance, you know, um, both on the pitch and off of it. Tactically, I think we lacked a bit of impetus and fresh ideas. However, the performance from the boys was very poor. And if there's any positive to the Man U result, it's probably that. It's not the worst week in the world to lose a big game because a lot of the favorites, well, two of the favorites drop points as well. So that's the only positive I can really take from that game. Well, I mean, you're right. It is a positive technically, but, you know, we're having discussions. And, uh, you know, some people, and it's not just, it's not just this guy, some people were saying that 
The other results are, are kind of overshadowing Man United's blunder. You know, it might not be a good thing because it, it will kind of take a lot of the shade away from Man United and kind of make it like just one of those weekends where anything could happen. Would you say that your problems are this weekend or, you know, bigger than that? That's, I yeah. think it's just... That's a, sorry. Go ahead, Dom. That's the issue that I'm worried about. I was going to talk about I said, if we just lost this game, but now everyone's just forgetting the fact that we have bigger problems than these other guys that lost. Uh, there is... You don't see anything going forward from here. Even with these new signings, you know, like we got that other guy. You signing uh, left backs. Back up you know, backs. You know there's nothing that's going to really come from it. Uh, it's only going to be a vicious cycle. You can just watch and basically hope that it's not carnage. That's all. It's not that bad, though. It's not it that is. bad. It is. We're three it games is. into the season. You know Look what? at the bigger picture. I was we one season. of the younger squads in the league. I think our average is around 24, 25. We got a manager who understands the ethos of the club, who's been there, done it, won the biggest trophies. It's not as bad as you think. You know, two months ago, Oli gave us third. He gave us Champions that's, League. That's not as happy. good as you think. That's not no, as good but as my you point think. Is, my point is, 15 games before that, everybody wanted Oli out. After I still wanted to him Burnley, out. Everybody wanted him out. He put on a double-digit winning run, and now everybody, after four games, is like dying for Oli. Not me. It's not I that bad. Let's give him ten want... games. Let's give no. him ten games for this season, and then start judging him. Oli was supposed to be out for me. Like you see, because we finished third, you forgetting how bad Chelsea was with Frank, right? And Arsenal's always shit and the rest, right? Arsenal, then, what? Look, look how far we were from the top two. That's what you need to see. We were more closer to what? Relegation than the top. But we you need to third. see. We yeah, third. Don't let that fool you. We were way, way, way off the pace. In another season, it might as well we finish eighth. We were way off the But there's not another season. The league, that, the league table doesn't lie. We finished third because of yeah, an accumulation of results over 38 games, bro. You can't... That's just how that's, it is. But for the club, it's not... Like, it's third. Obviously. But the, it's shit. It's shit. Like, the performance, that third is actually making it seem better than it is. Trust me. The guy doesn't have things under control and he won't have things under control because he can't handle big personalities. It's just showing. Because if he could, number one, Pogba would be on the bench. Number two, everyone's crying for Maguire to be on the bench. He can't handle benching big guys. He can't. But then who are you going to play, Brad Hugh? I really, I don't want to lie. I am not a fan of Maguire. He is no leader to me. Any league challenging centre back partnership was immense for Man U. That is the cornerstone of a championship is having a solid back four. And we were we are far from that, especially with Maguire. He has he doesn't just he doesn't enthuse you. He does he doesn't give you that confidence that okay, we might not concede today. In fact, it's the opposite. So I want him out, but then who are you going to play? Lindelof and Bayi. Those gents don't look solid. Yeah, you know, you know, gents, I, I get everything everyone's saying, right? And I, as the host, can't be, can't be biased today. And, of course, my team lost, so I'm not going to be biased anyway. Uh, but <laughs> I have to say this. I have to say one thing, though. I said... I, I said in, 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 uh, after the, the red card was given to Ashley Martial in that game, most good managers make changes right there and there. They take an attacker out and put a center back. They take a midfielder out and put a center back to make a back. Throw. They do something that will cause the, the, the team with the extra player to not be as, as a, a, a kind of a, a, a willing to attack all the time. 
Because as much as you're willing to attack when a other team has a red card, when a team, there's something dangerous about a team with a red card because the, the, the idea that they've got less players makes, makes teams think that, okay, they open. But anything can happen. So I feel like Oli didn't make any decisions after the red card. And that's something that tactically, a, a real, I have to a real disagree with you, bro. I have to disagree with you. Okay. Look at all the goals that we've conceded, even after the red card. All of them were individual errors. You know, the gents still have to defend. The back four still have to defend, even if we short one. And let's be honest here. How much defending is Martial doing, even when he's on the pitch? So it's not as if we lost a lot of um, defensive prowess when Martial left the pitch. I mean, we lost the guy up front, our number nine. That really shouldn't affect the defending, how it was affected. I mean, it was a bridge. Maguire's a bridge. He's a bridge to three points at Old Trafford. And that's what he does. He was panicked. He was marking his own player. You know, how, how can you be the Man United club captain and panic in the manner that he panicked? And that's all you can call it. He's panicking. And it seems as if it's a part of his DNA because... I honestly can't remember a performance when I was like, wow, Maguire is really leading this team by example. I honestly can't remember that. And if he's our leader, we've got a long way to go. I mean, where's the leaders on the pitch? Where's the leaders on the pitch? Yes, Oli could have been a bit more dynamic, if we're honest. He could have had some fresh ideas, you know. Um, but at the end of the day, he's not there by himself. Where is this? What's Michael Carrick doing on there? What's um, Mike Phelan doing? You know, or is he that hard-headed that he's not taking any suggestions? I don't know. You know, I can, what I do know is what's on the pitch. And that performance was not good enough by any of those players. Okay, okay. Well, so what's if, going on with the... If you can see that Maguire's fucking up and about a hundred or million other people can see that he's fucking up uh, and he's not showing that leadership, it's up to Oli to change him. And, and put who in? If, and give another someone else the captaincy. Mata, whoever the fuck, doesn't matter. Mata's not even uh, playing. But you need to. But the other guys don't play, but like Phil Jagielka wasn't the plane and he was the captain. It's about who can just like be a captain in the whole unit. And if Maguire is not doing it, is only going to keep Maguire as the captain? Put the further pressure because there's pressure building on him through the media. You need good managers know how to take pressure off their players. What is Oli going to do for Maguire? Keep on starting him and making him the captain and making him keep eating shit or give him some time off. Take the, What is he going to do? Okay. If he I keeps doing prefer, what he's... I prefer Harry Maguire out, honestly. Maybe okay. give him a young two-week break and he yeah. can play League Cup. He can play League Cup and maybe Champions League, honestly. But then who's going to play? Then we have to rely on Bailly and Lindelof as a I solid back, centre-back pairing. Man, that Jans, does not fill my heart with confidence. Jans, Jans, I'd love, I'd love for us to continue because I'm kind of enjoying it. I'm enjoying the Man United guys go, go at each other. But I think we have to move on. Uh, you know, we'll have other weeks to talk about all these mess-ups. Not the last time. Not going to be the last time. Uh, I think next we have to talk about uh, the bigger team, the more successful team with trophies, and uh, the more successful loss or the most, the bigger failure. Uh, Liverpool versus Ashton Villa, seven-two um, at the Villa Stadium. Uh, I'll let you guys start, and then I will, uh, I will say my piece. Just give it to me, Charles. Give it to me. What do you think? I actually didn't even watch the game. I had a long... Okay, after okay, then, okay. Game, then keep quiet, then. Keep after, quiet, after keep quiet then. Keep game, quiet, then. I, I was not watching NFL. Dominic, 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 you talk now. You keep quiet. Okay. Uh, I didn't watch the game either. <laughs> okay, Justin. <laughs> then sit down and let me go through the situation. Sit down and let me talk about the real one. Okay, Jens. Ah, God, where do I start this? Okay, Man United have signed Cavani. Uh, we all knew that, right? Sky Sports just 
you know, uh, made a break in you. The guys have Cavani. So, you know, more options in attack. Is Cavani going to play center back? <laughs> Ask Ali. Knowing him, he'll probably play him at center back. <laughs> okay, Jess, let me talk about Liverpool quickly, right? So we lost 7 2. Just it happens. It happens. We're the champions, one of the best teams in the world, if not the best team. 7 2. Really, it was just. It was just to keep Oli in Man United. I think I know what Klopp's doing. Okay, that's the Liverpool analysis. Um, we've bro, got that's not where it's going to end. You can't end it like that, bro. Uh, what? You guys didn't watch I'm the just game. Looking, you, I'm just you looking watch at the, the game. game stats now. <laughs> and it looks, as if, it looks as if you guys were dominated from the jump. I mean, my goodness. Fourth minute goal you didn't by see that. Watkins. You didn't Four see minute that. goal. You guys responded only after 2-0, my okay, goodness. Okay, 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 what okay, okay, going on okay, 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 I'll do the analysis, I'll do the analysis. Okay. Jack Grealish with the I'll do the analysis. Assist. I'll do the analysis. Hey, my, he, he boosted my fantasy league team a lot, hey? Don't talk three, okay, not three fantasy. Three assists, Let's, Let goals. us not talk fantasy. Oh, my goodness. Please, Thank please. you, Jack Grealish, wherever you are. Okay. Legs of thunder. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, okay, let's let's I'm gonna do the analysis. Basically, um Aston Villa got that ass. Uh we didn't have our goalkeeper. Clearly. Our injured for six weeks. Uh and there's there's gonna be about six games uh in the six weeks. So it's gonna be tough. Adrian he lost against Atletico Madrid, he lost against Arsenal. I mean Bro, I mean... What do you guys, mean, bro? It's a team sport. Yeah, but, I mean, the goalkeeper, but it makes a huge difference. Especially our goalkeeper. Remember, nah, our goalkeeper bro. before... There's 11 gents on the pitch. Remember our goalkeeper before Allison. Carry But you guys are the league champions. No. You're telling me you lose one player and you crumble. No, 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 no. You crumble I'll, to I'll, a I'll continue. I'll deficit continue. I'll continue. the two-season returning Aston Villa. Fresh from the championship. No, no, guys. I'll continue. This is, okay, not, so, this is not defending champion behavior. Okay, I'll continue. 7-2. Sorry, I'll continue. Go ahead, I'll, go continue. Ahead. I'll continue. I'll continue. We also didn't have our captain, Jordan Henderson. And many people say it doesn't matter. I know, but Jordan Henderson, the stats <laughs> do show that when he's not playing in a Liverpool game, when he's not playing in a Liverpool <laughs> game, we lose a lot of games. We lose a lot of games. We also don't have our main attacker, Sadio Mane. Sadio Mane is actually a good defender too. He's not just a That's good a big attacker, hit. he's also a good defender. So Mane is a big hit. You know, and, mm. and if you lose, if, the thing about our front three is if one of them goes down, it, it doesn't work as well as it does when all three of them are around. But y'all are the Both great Liverpool. Are, you're the they, European they champions. Continue. You're the league they champions. Continue. Rock and roll continue. football. Let me continue. Oh, wait. There's Let no more rock and roll football without one of the hey, front three. Wow. That was that sounds shaky. That was, that, was, that sounds shaky. That was rock and roll, but in the opposite side. It was, it was, it was self-affecting rock and roll. But anyway. But bro, let's be honest. Let's be okay. honest. This has been, there has been a narrative the past maybe 18 months that if Liverpool lose one or two, they might be trouble. And I think we see it right now. Yeah, but I mean, in the Premier League, we've only lost one. It's not one or two, right? And the games that we won recently, the games that we won recently, those were more dangerous than this. I don't want to say we earned this loss. I don't want to say that because no one ever wants to lose. But I think the Premier League has to realize that at a certain point, we have to get back to normalcy. We can't be that Man City 100 points. Liverpool winning every game except for one or two. We can't do that. I don't know. I, I, I don't think that. I don't think that's going to be. I don't think that's going to happen this season. I think number one is going to be is going to have at least five losses this season. I don't think number one is going to have two or three losses. I think number one is going to eat a lot of losses, and this is just testament to that. I've said this before to you, James. We're not a dynasty. We're not the great team that some Clearly Liverpool not. fans. Some Liverpool fans think we are. We will stumble. We're not a four billion dollar defensive team. We're not that. We 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 are a very good team. That's very that has a very good system. 
And if you take one thing out of that system, it's clearly, it clearly shows the kinks. It, it, I don't want to say it falls apart because we've handled injuries before, but clearly uh, something did go wrong. Jess, I know you don't watch the games, but you know Liverpool, you know Aston Villa. Anything you want to say before we move on? Everton is looking strong, Jens. They seem to be racking up those goals and those performances, eh? Yeah, yeah. Arsenal yeah. also aren't doing too badly, you know. Um, you know, for a weak team, they're doing pretty well. They, but, oh, they're getting results. <laughs> yeah, Tommy. Yeah, yeah, Dominic. I watched I watch the Arsenal game. Nah. Yeah. Uh, nah, nah, nah. They were struggling, bro. They were struggling against the poor Sheffield that haven't scored a goal yet before that game, right? Uh, scored the first goal 65 minutes in, some bullshit like that. Scored the second. And then guess what? The Arsenal showed itself again because they let one in and then they were shaky as motherfuckers. Uh, if that was a better team, like if that was Sheffield a bit more in form, a second goal was coming in. So Arsenal, they're not really there. Uh, as well last, as season, Charles... last season, they were losing this game, bro. Guaranteed. They were losing to Sheffield last season. Sheffield Even with the two the goal one. lead. Sheff- Sheffield is not the same Sheffield of last season, bro. They struggled. Arsenal, they, they... We all know Arsenal got a soft center. They were losing this game last season. If this was last season, what I'm trying to say is at least they look like they're on the up as opposed to some of the other big teams. Not to say they're dominating, uh, not to say they look strong like Everton, but at least no, they, they, yeah. they're getting the results. They're getting the Everton, results they need. Everton looks stronger than Arsenal right now. No lies. Yeah. I was actually laughing at seeing Alex Iwobi thinking he actually kind of did a bit of an upgrade. Eh? Nobody would have thought that when he was going to Everton. That's but a good point. It, that's a good point. That's yeah. a good point. When he went to Everton, everyone was like, you know, they're shipping him away. He's going down. They, yeah. I think, okay, we'll talk about this in another part, but Arsenal not getting Colin Chilotti when he was available, that's an owl. For me, for me, that's an owl. That's an owl. Yeah. Colin Chilotti is no a doubt. real one. He's a real one. But um, yeah, other results, man. Well, Man City 2 1 1. Is there anything anyone wants to say against uh, Leeds? Promoted Leeds? Also, yeah, Man City also looking like their lack of investment is showing some bit of the tiredness here also. So I think they're also going to find it stra- Like I told you on that first episode, Mourinho is coming through with some fire. That first <laughs> loss is kicking the bra into gear. I think so. Okay, I get. Uh, Santi Marino. did look a bit shaky, though. Yeah, yeah, I have to agree. I, I actually shout out to Leeds, though. Shout Strong start, Leeds. eh? Shout out to Leeds. Shout out to Leeds. And uh, Leeds, you might argue, performed better in the second half, and that's where most games are won. You know, it's like, hey, man, could have been, could have been worse for Man City. Anyway, Except for Spurs and Man U. Anyway, Jens, uh, let's move on to the transfers, man. Uh, it's not looking... I'm still seeing Cavani here. That's probably the biggest transfer while when it comes to the name, not really the price, because it's a free transfer. And he's been free the entire time. No one's picked him up. No one's want to pick him up. Uh, There's a reason for that, bro. Yeah, he's 33. What was he really he's doing old. last season for PSG? I don't really... PSG went far in the Champions League last season. How many times did you see Carvani? What does that tell you? They probably don't that's need him that much there. That's why I'm not... He- yeah. So, that's why I'm not even happy. Hey, look. He's a world-class finisher. Let's not die for the bra. He's a world-class finisher. Um, he really knows his way to go. But, I mean, I would have preferred him maybe four years ago. He's not okay. Zlatan. Is I'm Zlatan not going to underestimate came- him. I he feel was like more he's impactful, chances, but it's because of the personality and the marketing and all that propaganda that were feeding us. We ate that up. This guy has good technical ability. It's just about if he's motivated enough to make an impact in a very difficult league compared to where he was, and he wasn't really exhibiting any type of good form. So 
he is a good player. Let's not doubt yeah. he's a good player, but yeah. he's old. And I haven't seen his best in a while. So there is concerns, but I'm not going to complain about a quality international joining the club. I must say, though, I must say, yeah. it reminds me of Falcao. Just a bit. Got this guy. He, he was old, but he had that, that, that pedigree, that history. And when you nah, Falk, how was fresh off a broken leg, bro. Let's remember that. Yeah, he, he, he was yeah, fresh he off like, a broken leg in his like, late stages of his career. So, yeah, I see like, the. I, I'm seeing him more of a Diego Forlan type of situation where he can, or he, he's like almost 50 50. He might just yeah. take off, or, you know, he just might be a one in five mercurial guy. Fancy boy. Yeah, man. Well, aside yeah. from that. I don't prefer- Zlatan was way better. Yeah, yeah. Thing is, Zlatan still had, like, for, for, for Cavani, I'm, I, I have to see if he still has that hunger. Zlatan still has that, I am still the guy type of mentality, which is what's scary me about Bale, because Bale is not giving me vibes that he believes that he's still the guy. He's not bro, coming I think to Bale is going to make storms, bro. I think he's Central. just going to. I think so. I think he's got something to prove. I honestly feel like he's got something to prove it if he's given an opportunity. I'm just seeing 25-yard goal screamers, bro. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 you got a point. But like I said, it just doesn't look that way. But hey, man, maybe guys are different. People are different. Zlatan, we knew because of the way he behaved, the way he carried himself. We knew. But think about Bale. I get what you're saying, bro. I, yeah. But think about Bale when he was peaking. Yeah. Like his last two seasons at Spurs when he was literally carrying that team, yeah. scoring double digits goals out the box. He wasn't really the, the uh, front stage center guy or whatever. Front, you know, he wasn't really yeah. that guy. He always seemed to be a bit relaxed yeah. and he never really let the fame get to him. So... I don't know. I've got good hopes yeah. for that guy. I think as, as soon as he's fit, he's going to make an impact. But Mourinho made it work with Zlatan. So he's probably going to make it work with Bale. He knows how to handle these no doubt. with the talent. He knows how to deal with them. Mourinho had an old team in Inter. Made that work. You know, so we're dealing with a guy that knows how to deal with someone old and talented. So probably that is going to help. Uh, any other big transfers? Uh, Liverpool didn't sign anyone really. Arsenal didn't really make any big signings. They signed a couple of centers. Man, you're signing left backs, bro. Imagine. Tell Back him, up he's, left back. He's, he's, he's technically, he's technically, well, what, what, what the word is, is that Mike, he's not really a good attacker, but he's very good defensive. Doesn't have a lot of attacking numbers. And that's kind of, my worry, because that's kind of like Luke Shaw. Luke Shaw might not be a good attacker, but defensively, Luke Shaw is not a bad left back. Defensively, he's not a bad left back. So I'm wondering if you guys are kind of swapping apples for apples here and not really... But why, I don't understand what the end goal is here. This guy's 27, and I don't think our problem is Luke Shaw. Yeah. I think our problem is more central. It's not... Our problem yep. is central, yep. so I don't our, know if this team. Our ten, problem ten is ten with Pogba and Co. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's midfield central. Pogba, hey, Maguire, De Gea. Yeah, but you guys have Van der Beek, which is another kind of weird signing because that's an attacking. And okay, he's attacking, but Van der Beek, he's versatile. I'm actually surprised Ole hasn't just managed him into the into the, the squad. You know, sometimes the manager... He'll that guy reminds me of Herrera. He does have that vibe to him. And Herrera could play that position where he's just behind uh, Pogba and Bruno Fernandes. Listen, Bruno Fernandes offers too much in the tank. So you can't, you can't uh, uh, mix Van der Beek there. And Pogba is more of a transitional midfielder, carries the ball, looks for the passes and all that stuff. Van der Beek, yes, he's attacking, but Van der Beek is also versatile. So I'm wondering why they're not actually finding a way to just slip him in that team. 
You know, I know. You, only, you can't slip him in, bro. You have to no, take I, Pogba out. I absolutely take get that. Take Pogba out, put Van der Beek in. I absolutely get that. But the, that's the thing about a top manager. A top manager. Like, take someone like Van Eyden. Van Eyden was never a midfielder when he fought. He was a winger. But because he had the technical ability, Klopp knew that he could play him in the midfield. And through, you know, experience being in that midfield, he actually became more of a ball-carrying, box-to-box midfielder. Van der Beek does seem to have the talent. He's a Dutch guy. I'm wondering why Oli doesn't make it work. Because he's one of the top midfielders, and he's just sitting in that bench. It's like, this is a guy that was wanted by Madrid a couple of seasons ago. And he's just sitting in the Man United bench. Well, first of all, I'm going to, de- I'm going to disagree about that Van Alden comment because he was a goal-scoring midfielder at Newcastle and PSV. Uh, Klopp, did, Klopp did do a lot. But, um, you know, he's no uh, Sir Alex Ferguson building players. Van Alden was a pretty decent goal-scoring <laughs> midfielder. Ole isn't there yet. He isn't there yet. But I think he understands the ethos. He's giving the young gents a chance. He's giving them starts. And that's the United way. I honestly feel as if the performances aren't good enough, honestly. I get Ole could be more dynamic. I get that. I honestly do. Um, We don't seem to have a plan B. We seem to only be able to counter. And that's, that's the thing that we really know how to do. But we need some more control. But with control, you need better players. You know, you can't win a league um, just countering all the time. You need someone who can hold it both at the back and in the center. Do we have those players? Do you see Harry Maguire holding the ball under pressure like a Rio Ferdinand? Mm. Yeah, man. Retaining possession? I don't think so. Do you see Pogba retaining possession, creating chances like Paul Scholes? I don't see that happening. Like our center is weak. We soft. We soft at the center. And to be fair, as much as I've been defending Ole, he is to blame. He surely he sees the same errors as everyone else. But my God, these niggas need to pull up their socks, man. Okay, Jens. Okay, Jens. Let me just end the transfer of this big question. Who won this window? What's the team you look at and think, okay, they made this window work. They're the ones that are... Everton. The Everton, bro. They signed... All three signings are in the team, in the starting 11, making an impact. James is the player of the month, probably. The core has got that. Midfield on miss. lock, running his socks off. And then the Allen guy, is, he's the like, last piece in the puzzle. All three guys are playing for the manager. They look like they've been in that team forever. So it's clear that they guys, they doing the right things. You know. Um, I, I've got to agree. It's got to be Everton. Uh, a lot of smart signings. Shows the quality of the manager and the type of control he has at the club. Um, Chelsea, you know, I, I called it a bit early. I think Chelsea bought a bit too much. Um, they did well in terms of acquiring and adding and strengthening the squad. That was very good. I just feel like they bought too much because most of the guys they bought, they're trying to get them in the team and they still got to gel. Um, however, I think they came a close second, even though they, they bought too much just by strengthening the squad. Liverpool didn't too, do too bad uh, with the two quality signings, um, Thiago and Jota. I think those were good signings. And honestly, man, you did poorly. I don't want to lie. Van der Beek was a good signing. Young man. A uh, lot of potential. We need some strength in the middle. But Okay, let me not die for this Tellers boy. Uh, maybe he'll make, but I doubt. And even if he does make, we don't need someone making from left back. We need a proper centre back. We need a, uh, a centre uh, midfielder with some type of balls. Because it seems as if we're lacking that in the middle at the moment. So, yeah. Okay, James. And for me, I have to agree with, uh, I mean, I don't want to admit this, but I have to agree, Everton, and Everton have a manager I like, which is just painful. It's, it's almost reminding me uh, of, uh, you know, when uh, Man United, I know you guys end up not liking him, but it reminds me of when you guys got Jose Mourinho. You know, I'm a big Mourinho fan, and, you know, 
as much as you know, I like Mourinho. I just you know, he just died to me that day. And Colin Chalotti, dead to me too. Like him, but he's dead to me. So yeah, Everton did win. Everton did win. We don't want to talk about the losers because I think we've talked about enough teams that have lost this transfer window. Uh, Man City uh, is, is another team that I think didn't do too much. They did sort out their defense, kind of, but they didn't sort it out with who they wanted. Uh, I don't want to dwell on that because they got a guy and maybe he'll make. He's another tennis like guy from the Portuguese league, Ruben Diaz, uh, Benfica guy. Maybe he wasn't too good. He didn't stand out too much in the game, uh, but maybe he'll uh, get used to the Premier League. Anyway, Jens, uh, let's move on to uh, local Mecca, as Lino calls this segment, where we talk about South African stuff. And uh, a big South African, well, a, a big move happened last week for South Africa. Uh, another move happened two weeks ago with Gavin Hart moving to Cape Town. Maybe it was too soon. Maybe it was too soon. Uh, but uh, another big move happened uh, last week with um, uh, Itzo, uh doubling up his salary at Al Ali, the uh, Egyptian outfit. Uh, just wondering what you guys think about this move. Uh, I'm, I'm not going to say much. Uh, I'm going to wait for you guys to finish and I'll give my piece. So, uh, Fino, you want to start it off? I think it's a good move for the guy personally. Um... You know, it's like playing Street Fighter at the arcade and you've got the top three scores or you've like maxed the game out every time you play it, you know. Yeah. It, it kind of gets it kind of gets boring. You need a new challenge and I think that's what he has. Um, Al-Akhli is a different type of pressure for him. There'll probably be more expectancy than there was at Sundowns. Um, I would like to think he probably has a little bit less, more control um, of the club as opposed to sundowns where it would seem as if he was running all the transfers and it was his rule, basically it was his rule. I'm not sure you'll have the same type of um, uh, control at al Ahli. However, I think it's a good move for him personally. And I think if he does do well, which I hope he does, um, it will elevate our game. It will give our game more exposure and hopefully it will give him an opportunity to coach in, in Europe. I mean, doing well at a big, cl- uh, big African club like Al Ahli can only put you. It's it's a good platform to be on. I think he's got himself a good platform, and honestly, as much as I'm a Chiefs supporter, I hope he does well. Uh, I hope he does well, and I think mm-hmm. he will. I, I don't think it will be as easy as how he was sweeping up in South Africa, uh, just because of the expectancy and the pressure which seems to come with that job and that club. But yeah, I hope he does well. Batman, uh, these, are uh, the, these are the champions, uh, this and uh, and uh, it's a big club. It's a lot of it's a, it's strange that he started at a club that big in another country. It's a big club, and what do you think about the movement? Uh, honestly, I don't agree. I think that yes, it's a good move that he left South Africa. I want to remember, I brought it up the last time, like, what's he gonna do? Uh, Good that he left because he clocked he clocked PSL as uh, Ricardo said he clocked that there's nothing more, but he's going to a club that has clocked that league for the past how many years? Like that club has no. If you go look at I saw in, in that group the last time you posted I think they won the league the last five six years in a row eight years like some bullshit like that like. I don't think he's going to get challenged now. I think it will be easy. It's like going to Juve and just going to win the league there. Quick and easy. So, the I would honestly have liked him to see him at a, at, a, at a club out of Africa, to be honest. Even if it was going to be in a second tier or third tier of another team. Like... Go to championship in England or first division. It's fine. And, and work your way up and try to get to Premier League with a shit team or whatever. And build your name like that, maybe. But for me, that team, yes, he'll probably win stuff. But it's, it's, it's al Ashley. Like, they expect you to win those leagues. And even if he gets a Champions League, it's not still really uh, getting to that level like... 
he did something great. He'll only do something great at a club that hasn't achieved so much. Okay. Was he getting those offers though? I think yeah, he needs to go. His agent needs to go and put his CV <laughs> out at better places, you know. Hey, he needs Chupa Mutong's um, agent. That guy's <laughs> that guy went from Stoke to PSG to buy him. Oh <laughs> my god. <laughs> That's yeah. That's a, that's a that's a quick topic. There, yeah, Chupo Chupo is doing the most, man. He's gonna win a Yo, Bundesliga now after winning a French that guy's agent is after being in front of UEFA. Oh, yeah. Stoke. <laughs> okay, Jans. Uh, I just I just wanted to end this with one more topic. It's a bonus topic. I don't want to keep you guys for too long, but I have to ask this. Uh, Juventus cancelled the game against Napoli, I think, because of COVID reasons. Couple more other games in Europe were uh, cancelled because of COVID reasons. There's a lot of people money. Court, money quoted. I just want to ask you guys: Do you think we are heading towards another shutdown, another end to football for a little while, or do you think that we're just gonna ride this wave that's returning back? Quick, quick answer. Quick, quick answer, Jan. Do you think we're gonna ride this wave, or do you think? Uh, this is going to, you know, create another stop. Batman. I think it's going to stop, especially once four or five key players, Mane, Salah, the keeper, Van Alden, gets this bullshit. And then another team, Man City, Everton, five guys in the starting 11. Then they're all going to go and say, guys, let's just hold the shit until it's calm again. I see it going there, definitely. You know, honestly, if there's any threat of any type of outbreak or a second wave, they need to cut at the same time. Let's not ride no waves. Let's cut the snake's head off from the jump. As soon as there's any type of threat, they see a small outbreak in one club, let's chill for a month, guys, once. Let's just chill for a month. Let's lock it back down. Everybody get back in their little bubbles and let's play it safe, rather. Okay, Jans, I have to agree with all of you. Uh, so this has been Disky Den podcast. Uh, it's technically our first episode, but we recorded three. Maybe we'll take them out at a later stage. Uh, please subscribe. Uh, please comment down below. Uh, let us know what you think about your team's transfers. Uh, let us know if you think they're going to start football again. You know, like it's look, start looking good. And uh, just talk to us about football, man. This has been uh, uh, Disky Dance. That has been Dominic. Down there has been Pino and I've been Abo. And we'll check you guys out later, man. Glory, glory, Man United.